Hello everybody, I am Nico D, so today I'm back with a new SBC, so this is the Mango Pi MQ Pro, so this is the most powerful RISC-V computer that I've ever had, but it ain't very powerful. It only has got one core, the C906, at 1 GHz, it doesn't perform great, mine has got 1 GB of RAM, you can also buy it with 500 MB. It isn't fast, it isn't that useful, but it is very cool because it is RISC-V. So this board is just a proof of concept for me, so it ain't worth the price that they are selling it for compared to a Raspberry Pi Zero for example. But because it is RISC-V we can use it to test software on RISC-V architecture, so that is a good thing to have. This is just the first of a whole lot more that is coming. There are already more powerful RISC-V cores and also a lot more powerful RISC-V socks. I have gotten this board from Brett from Brett's Tech, so from Brett.dk. He also reviews SBCs, so follow his website for more SBC news. And thank you Brett. Here I am holding my old Raspberry Pi 0 W with USB hub. So this uses pogo pins. And the Mango Pi has the same paths, so I can also use this USB hub with the Mango Pi. And there was also a colored pin header included with the Mango Pi MQ Pro. So this is the same as the Raksha boards have. So the same as the Raksha Zero over here. So now let's go over the specs. So first we have got two times USB-C, so one is for the power and one is for the data. Then we have got our mini HDMI port, then the SD card reader, then the 40 pin GPIO header. Then we have got the DVP port, so this is a digital video port. Left in the middle we have got our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip. And then we have got our SOC. So this is the all winner D1 Xeon Tai and the core is a C906 Risk 5 at 1 GHz. Then on the bottom we have got our DRAM. So this is DDR3 RAM, either 512 MB or 1 GB. And we have got room to solder an SPI flash, but my board doesn't come with SPI. And as I already said, there are the pads for the USB breakout and also for sound. And then as last, there is the DSi CTP port. So this is for DSi and also for Ethernet. So CTP is for Ethernet. Well, you are nothing with an SBC without software. So for the software, I go to the Armbian forum. There I go to advanced users and development. Then board bring up and there we have got Armbian image and build support for RISC-V. This is maintained by Bob's 150. So another great job that he does. So here we can download our image. So here link to download images. There Netza D1, Armbian TV and then I choose the most recent one. And there Armbian Jammy with the XFCE desktop. So these Nedja images we can just use on our Mango Pi MQ Pro. We don't have to change anything and everything works except for HDMI sound. Well, it works when it works. So there are a few problems like with the USB. Sometimes some USB devices will not wake up. You have to plug them in and plug them back out and plug them back in until it works. But the USB does work, Wi-Fi does work, HDMI works, so all the hardware does work, but with some problems. But this is already a big step to have all the hardware working. So this sock doesn't come with a 3D graphics accelerator, so no 3D graphics, no 3D games, no fancy games, but it does have a 2D graphics accelerator, so this can be used for desktops. So we can run desktops on it, but I must say it isn't a very pleasant experience. But that is to be expected. Most software runs on Armbian, except for browsers. 
So to make browsers run well on this it will take a lot of work and I don't think this will work on this sock. So here we are in our XFC4 desktop. So for fun just let's play this file on the desktop here. And as you see this plays horrible but this is expected. I know this board is meant to be used as a desktop but as I said before it is a proof of concept. It shows that it is possible so when we have got more powerful CPUs and a decent GPU then you see that it will be useful. This is just the cheapest way that they could find to show the possibility of RISC-V. And I must say I am impressed while I am totally not impressed with the performance. But I expected that, what else can you expect from one core? So let's run a 7-zip benchmark. So there is only one core to run it on. And this performs very badly compared to other single board computers. But compared to the Raspberry Pi Zero, which is an ARM HF, so 32 bits, that does it a little bit worse than the Mango Pi MQ Pro. Certainly when you use it headless, so without a display and without a desktop, then it is a little bit faster. So on most ARM SBCs you don't notice when you are running a desktop on the performance. The desktop uses so little of the performance that you don't notice it in benchmarks. But here you do notice it of course, because there is just so little performance to use. So let's go to the benchmarks. So the 7-zip result with the MQ Pro with the desktop is 573 MIPS. Without a desktop it is 602 MIPS. And compared to the Raspberry Pi Zero which is ARM HF so 32 bits. In fact you cannot compare this. But well I have to compare it with something. So Raspberry Pi OS with the desktop gets 427 MIPS. And without a desktop it gets 614 MIPS. So also with the Raspberry Pi Zero a desktop does impact the performance a lot. Just for fun to compare these cores with other cores. So here we can see that it gets 0.6 MIPS per gigahertz. So there is only 1 gigahertz and it gets 600. So that is 0.6. If we compare that with an A72 core from the RK3399 for example, that gets 1 MIP per gigahertz. So this RISC-V core performs a lot worse than an A72 but that is a high performance core of course. And now I also did the Nico D Blender benchmark just for fun, just to see what would happen. And the result for that was with a desktop. 8 hours 34 minutes and without a desktop 7 hours and 44 minutes. So that is amazingly long. So if we compare that with the Kadas Vim 4, my fastest ARM SBC which does it in 5 minutes. The Kadas Vim 3 does it in 9 minutes. RK3399 does this in about 10 minutes. So this does 8 hours 34 minutes. So that shows that RISC-V ain't good for Blender. It only shows that. It doesn't say anything else. Don't think benchmarks say anything. Then the temperatures and the power consumption. So it runs a lot hotter when you use a display. So with a desktop and with a display it runs at 57 degrees celsius in idle and 63 degrees celsius maxed out. So this was during the blender benchmark and that took hours so it didn't go over that. The idle headless is 47 degrees celsius and maxed out headless it is 50 degrees celsius. So headless it isn't that much. I wasn't using a heatsink or a cooler. So it does stay cool enough but it is only one core. Power consumption 0.2 amps in idle with a desktop 0.15 amps idle headless. Maxed out with a desktop 0.3 amps maxed out headless 0.25 amps. That doesn't sound much but it is quite a lot when you compare it with performance per watt. I've got quad core SBCs like the Rockpi S which consumes as much as this. 
but is four times as powerful or even more than that. And as last the transfer rate. So the SD reads was 12 megabytes a second and SD write is 10.3 megabytes a second. So this was with my fastest SD card. The USB read was 21.8 megabytes a second and the USB write was 7.6 megabytes a second. This is really a bottleneck for this board. But well, it exists of only bottlenecks. So the access time is more than 1 millisecond. I've never seen such a slow access time. So that means that sequential read and write is also very slow. So now my conclusion about the MangoPi MQ Pro. So it is a very nice board. I like it a lot. But it isn't very useful. It isn't powerful. It isn't cost efficient. It isn't power efficient, but it just proves that RISC-V can be used for computing. So with better cores, with better architectures, with better GPUs, things can be a lot better. It shows that it is possible. I don't think RISC-V will replace x86 or ARM soon or ever even. It is just another choice, something else. It is great for big companies like NASA. They can design a chip around their products. For us the normal user it isn't that interesting yet. We will see a lot of microcontrollers with RISC-V that are put in our devices. But I don't think RISC-V will soon be our computing power. For that ARM and x86 just are too good. So that's it for today. I will review a lot more boards in the coming weeks. So I'll subscribe for that. Thank you all for watching. Please like the video. See you later. Bye.